supposed to be dead. Do you know how painful that would be, Peter Parker? And I can't wait to watch. Cute place. Real homey. Oh, great. It's Liv. When we hear in the news or the media about someone doing something horrible, we often say, like, we could never do that. Is that even true? Does there, is there psychology or science that backs that up? Any of us are capable in the right circumstances of doing almost anything. And what are those circumstances? And what possibly happened to Doc Ock? Liv. Mr. Fisk, if we fire again this week, there could be a black hole under Brooklyn. Got 24 hours. What this means is there could be a rupture in the space-time continuum. Often when we are young, we look at the world with rose-colored glasses. We have all of these dreams of things that we want to accomplish and differences that we want to make in the world. But when we get older, we often realize that we don't have the funds or the ability to be able to do that. That need for authority or that need to work under someone else so that the thing that we need, that thing that we believe is so important, needs to have a benefactor to be able to help it out. And when people are in places of power, we want to listen to them, especially when they are someone that is very rigid or angry, that gets aggressive really quickly. It's very hard, especially if we're more of a people pleaser or someone that wants to perform and do really well, to be able to say no to that. I'm not refusing. No more excuses. I just need more time. And I think that a lot of of times we want to push that away that you know what this wouldn't be me I wouldn't do this this looks back to that Milgram experiment where they ended up giving shock treatments to people to see if being electroshocked would actually help learning but that wasn't true the real test was to see if the teachers that were administering these electric shocks would do so and do so to the most extreme deadly levels most people even the experimenters at the time thought that only one percent to three percent of the population would be able to go to the most extreme dangerous amount of electric volts but the truth was completely different 60% of participants were able and did listen to the instructor and gave all the way to maximum volts. And that was even when they were screaming, please don't do this, stop, I have a heart condition. Most of them did protest just like Liv did. Eventually, under that stern authority that was rigid and unwavering, they went back and continued because it's also part of our dynamic to listen to authority, to do what we have to. And they were told that this is important. It's for a greater good. We need to do this. You have to. Spider-Man? <sighs> okay, okay. And so you have to ask yourself, what are the things that could alter our behavior to be able to do things that we don't want to do, even against our own ethical feelings about things? And so, one would be fear if you're scared or think something bad is gonna happen to you. Two is that hierarchy of authority. In the Milgram experiment, they started off to make sure that it was kind of in a academic setting and they ended up wearing white jackets because that looked more official. But they've redone this experiment many different ways, even without the white shirt, just someone in authority that's saying you have to do it. And people still, less often, but still almost 60% of the time will listen to authority. Oh, okay, that's a, that, that's a no-no. This is fascinating. <laughs> Entirely different Peter Parker. Okay, a little bit of a gut, perhaps from conventional warping. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's truly a scientist. All the information that comes through to her, she wants to analyze and take a look at and learn from. Even if you're trying to do something to learn from it, that doesn't mean that it's good. Any tool can be used for good or ill. It's kind of how you apply it. That's why we have in place all of these new rules about informed consent and people have to understand what they're going through because even with the Milgram experiment, the people that were being experimented on actually thought that they were part of the experiment itself. They weren't the subjects, but they were the administrators. That was for the purpose of that they wouldn't be really thinking that all of their actions were being analyzed and they felt that that would give a more honest reflection of their behavior. But because of that, well, I think that's one of the reasons that Therapy has gotten a bad name, but also that's why we've changed for informed consent. To make sure that people know what they're involved in beforehand, because sometimes realizing all of the dark parts of us can be kind of shocking and make us feel bad and have a negative influence on us after. And we're supposed to do no harm. Stay in this dimension too long, your body's gonna disintegrate. 
Do you know how painful that would be, Peter Parker? You can't imagine. And I, for one, can't wait to watch. She seems to be so desensitized to that that she enjoys the process of things and doesn't really feel much empathy for the subjects that she's watching over. Does that mean that she's evil or bad though? But no, it doesn't fully because often people that do experiments over and over and over on people or things, you do become desensitized to doing something over and over again. That's how exposure therapy works. That's how threshold theory works. The more that you do something, the less that it's gonna bother you for the good and for the bad. That's why the military uses violent shooting video games to increase the amount of times that people can shoot back when they're being shot at, and it's effective. So I wouldn't say that this in itself tells us that she is a evil or bad person, and I, I'll be honest, I don't even like the word evil. I think that in most cases, people are good and we're all capable of all things. But it definitely gives me kind of food for thought. Dr. Olivia Octavius. My friends call you Doc Ock? My friends actually call me Liv. My enemies call me Doc Ock. I like that she has wit about it. When you are submerged in a culture, like conformity is a really important, strong drive that we have. That goes back to our feelings of us and them and tribalism. When you work in a certain culture, you usually see yourself as the good guys, that you're doing the right thing or that you have a purpose that maybe other people don't understand. And that need to conform, like you can tell that Liv, even though she's disorganized. Organize your desktop, lady. Wow that she is that type A perfectionist achiever, that she looks beyond, she wants to be able to please people. And I think that that puts her in this really dangerous position in wanting to conform with the company culture and wanting to be the strongest in her tribe. Because sometimes if that culture starts to go awry, you don't notice it because you're in the fish tank. You can tell me you had an invisible friend. Could you give me that back, young man? It's proprietary. It always impresses me when people have really good manners, especially when they're under pressure. It's so much harder to have really proper manners when you're under stress. So whenever especially the bad guy has really proper manners, there's something that impresses me with that. Probably shouldn't, but I don't know. Always be classy, even if you're the bad guy in a show. Selecting a bagel. Act super normal. Spider-Man? Hey, hands up! Get back here! Where do you think you're going? goes to that thing of company culture. If you were thinking, oh, how do you know it's really company com culture? I think this scene kind of proves it. You yourself, I think that we need to think about sometimes when our culture, when our company, when our tribe, when the people around us, when the hobby that we're involved with, we often become more and more aligned with their beliefs. And that's the same thing for where you grow up. The tribe was so important to our survival and those outliers are the first ones to be booted from the tribe. That's also where a lot of social anxiety can come from. If you change schools, change where you live, you can often feel that fear of judgment because you don't always know what the rules of the game are. What are you going to do? What would be a misstep? What are the rules that this new group goes by? And that can cause us a lot of internal turmoil and stress. I killed Spider-Man. Why did I just see two more? There's three, actually. Live as Doc Ock, you see her grow back to the same height as Kingpin. She could, if she wanted to be, even be higher. And actually, we do feel a certain amount of respect to things that are bigger than us because that was often more dangerous. But she doesn't want to be disrespectful. Not to his henchmen. She didn't have any qualms about grabbing him by the throat and holding him there. To Kingpin, she does. And you can even tell her voice. It's still calm and relaxed, whereas before, it was much more strong and aggressive. This means you get what you want. It means my collider works. All we have to do is kill a couple of spiders, and the collider will bring your family back. And now as she's trying to kind of convince him, she grows a little bit more in size. So he has to look 
up to her and listen to her. And you can tell she starts to use that kind of manipulative, listen to me, things are going to be okay. She wants to soothe him, make him feel relaxed. So she also has a good deal of social engineering. Social engineering are those skills that we do to get what we want in social situations. She is thinking ahead to be able to have her plan and her main goal is to have her collider. She doesn't mind if some people have to get hurt for this greater good. As many families as you want. And that goes back to that thought of what could we sacrifice in the name of science? What makes it worthwhile? These very strong ethical questions. If we've looked back in time, a lot of people have done something because they could and not thought of if they should or what would be the repercussions. And when you hold this power, this idea in your hands, to be able to let go of something that you have created, that's kind of like letting go of your own child, your baby, especially if you spent all of these years in creating it can be really hard even if you shouldn't. Sometimes we go through with things because we want them without having to think about it or we block that part out of our mind so that it doesn't even come into play and we'll push anyone away that is there to stop us. Tomorrow, my collider. Our collider. She's starting to have that little bit of animosity that he's trying to take over something that is her idea. And people work for companies all the time that take credit or take their ideas and just kind of use them and never give credit to the person that actually created it, which can be a really painful experience. But a lot of times you just don't have the funds to be able to go through with an experiment that you know that you could do without it. And that puts you in the bind of what are you going to do? Give up on your dream to be able to do the right thing or be able to create that and then hope that it will be used for the purposes that you want. Cute place. Real homey. Oh great, it's Liv. Just want to say it's a little bit interesting, right? Only her friends call her Liv, yet Aunt May calls her Liv. So did they have a relationship before this that we are just kind of hinting to? Just one of those little hmm moments. But we're the spider uh, gang. Would you mind taking this outside? We don't pick the ballroom, we just dance. Oh, I think I'll be taking that. But there's a lot of questions about human behavior and also our judgments to people that do things that we can see as wrong. That sometimes right and wrong is not as black and white as we would like to feel comfortable with because we're all kind of shades of gray. I didn't remember what happened to Doc Ock. So I'm gonna show it to everyone else just because you may not have remembered either. <laughs> by a bus. I don't know, I think that that's kind of like not the proper fitting end for Liv, if it is the end for Liv. But I also think that sometimes we get so absorbed in our single purpose and often people that lean towards being scientists or more towards the obsessive traits that sometimes we can be so obsessed with things that we're not really looking at our surroundings around us. And by the way, for the experiment, there wasn't even one person that refused to participate. Everyone did. Though this was an experiment done 60 years ago, but every time that it's reproduced, there is still a shockingly large amount of people that will conform to authority. And that is even across cultural differences. You don't need multiple universes to expand your mind. So instead of making a collider, which would be really cool, you can instead join my sponsor Skillshare and their community filled with inquisitive creative people. Because now is the best time to develop your own skills. Personally, I really enjoy the process of learning a new skill and also developing more of an understanding about myself and the world around me. But I'm more of a hands-on learner, so I like learning through watching someone doing something or interacting. I find that more interesting and it also helps me recall the information better. So I chose the class by Andy J. Pisa, who lays out five hands-on exercises to help you unlock that artistic identity, which as you can see, I love doing. Because as a creator, your identity is what you want to portray. The way that you craft that is really important. So you get to work in the medium of your choice and you get to explore 
who you are and what you have to say. And then you end up putting it all together in your own personal style guide. And the cool thing about this course is that you get to do it in whatever medium or mode is personal and enjoyable to you. But Skillshare is so much more than any one class. It's an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves to explore new ideas, develop new skills. It might be your career, your hobby, or just personal growth. Another class that's really wonderful is creative confidence and silencing your inner critic because in the end, it's us who hold ourselves back. Can't we all benefit from being kinder and more supportive to ourselves? That's one skill that you can give to yourself that will last a lifetime. And because you're watching this video, the first thousand people get to use this link and get one month for free to try out Skillshare. So you can just click on that link in the description below for no risk and start exploring your creative ideas today. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. And you can let me know about the why do good people do bad in the comments also. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video.